action without molestation. That's why it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is our own Jerusalem. We must pray therefore before it becomes too late. Because it is as we pray that we will enjoy peace as individuals, as families, as a church, as a city here, and as a country as well. In First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Reading from verses 1 and 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Here you find the commandment of the Lord that is exhorting us, is commanding us that our prayer will not just be for ourselves. You know many times when we say we're praying, we're praying for ourselves, want to get saved, that's good. Get sanctified as good, get baptized in the Holy Ghost and get healed. But go beyond just praying for yourself. Go beyond just praying for your own little family. And even go beyond just praying for the church. Pray for the people in authority. Do that as an individual. Do that as part of a family. That first of all, intercession, supplications, prayer be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So then we understand that we ought to pray for the peace of the place where we are living. We go to number two, prosperity promised to those who pray and seek peace. Prosperity promised to those who pray and seek peace. In Psalm 122, verse 6 and verse 7, once again, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. That is, the people that love Jerusalem. And they love Jerusalem so much, they will pray for Jerusalem. That there will be peace for them. And there will be prosperity for them as well. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls. That ought to be your prayer. When you pray for the peace of the city, indirectly you'll have peace for your own family as well. And you have peace in your own life. And prosperity be within thy palaces. Let's see the promise of the Lord. The promise of prosperity. The promise of peace. The promise of protection. For the people that take this injunction, this exhortation very serious and they are obedient and they are praying for the peace of the city as well as the peace of the country in Isaiah chapter 54 Isaiah chapter 54 verses 13 and 14 and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children uh, you will notice how many, many, for many years now, uh, going back to uh, many regimes of different governments, as uh, the disturbances began, our children didn't have enough peace to even get to school or to go to school. Our children didn't have enough peace for the uh, continuation of the school system very well. And you will see it has come to the level now where much has been disturbed in the country's educational system. That's what we're saying. When there is no peace, virtually everything is hindered. But it says now, if we love our city so much, if we love our country so much, and we pray for the peace of the city and the country, it will even affect our children, that all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Our children will be able to have the teaching of the word of God. They will grow up in the way of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Even our children will be able to have peace. And as our children have peace, we will be able uh, to continue in everything that we ought to do. See the continuation in verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Thou shalt not fear nor, uh, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. 
Here he is telling us that if there were peace, then there will be righteousness as well. In fact, it says in that righteousness, we shall be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. You see the result of the prayer? We love our country, we love our city. As a result of that, we are praying. And then it says, we will be established. There will be no oppression. And we'll even be free from fear and from terror. It says, it will not even come near. And it will not come upon us. We go back to the Psalms in Psalm 147. Psalm 1. For seven. Which? From verse 11. Which? The Lord taketh pleasure Which? in them that fear him, Which? in those that hope in his mercy. The Lord taketh pleasure in the people that fear him, and the people that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. He has blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of wheat. It's also talking about having enough to eat. When the commerce is not disturbed, when everything is going on as it should go on, it says he will even give us the finest of wheat, which there is a body of food in general. And the finest of wheat is talking about the very best that we can have and we ought to have. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. That means then that there will be no disturbance to the preaching of the word of God. In fact, the word of the Lord will run very swiftly. As you have seen from the passages we are reading, that whenever there is peace, there will be collective prosperity. There will be individual prosperity. And there will be spiritual prosperity as well when peace is reigning. The promise is connected with the command in the text. In fact, it says, they shall prosper. They shall prosper that love thee. And as we look at the fullness of the meaning of that prosperity, number one, you'll prosper in your soul. That is, uh, you'll be able to have your quiet time, you'll be able to read your Bible, you'll be able to pray, you'll be able to get to church, you'll be able to do everything you ought to do. If there is retreat, you'll be able to attend. If we're planning crusade, you'll be able to attend. Whatever needs to be done, you'll be able to do it for your soul to prosper spiritually. And that's the will of the Lord in Second, in Third John, verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Beloved, it says, this is the wish of the apostle. Not only of the apostle, it is the will of God. And it is the desire of every right thinking person that you will be able to have prosperity in your soul. And of course, you will be in health. You know, you don't know how many lives are lost whenever there is disturbance or unrest. Uh, if you are not able, if the ordinary person is not able to get to the hospital, or if the ordinary person is not able to get to the person that might pray for him or help him to be well, how lives are lost. For us to have peace, then if we have peace, there will be healing. If we have peace, the hospitals will function better. If we have peace, the school system will function in a better way. If we have peace, the church too, with its a system of counseling and praying and helping people, will function in the normal way. That's the reason we are praying, that there should be peace in our country. But then it will bring prosperity to the soul. Number two, prosperity in the family. And number three, prosperity in the church. Although when we're talking about prosperity in the church, we're not just talking about material things. We're not talking about money alone. We're talking about spiritual prosperity. That the church will be able to have, they'll be able to enjoy 
uh, the peace and the prosperity and the winning of souls and the work of God will continue. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Verse 31. Then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Here it says that they are dressed and because they are dressed that simply means there was peace and because they had peace in the church then the Lord prospered the church and it was not just uh, that they are dressed in one city look at it in that verse 31 throughout all Judea and throughout all Galilee and throughout Samaria and because of, the, of that the churches were edified they were walking in the fear of the Lord they were in the comfort of the Holy Ghost and there was prosperity in the sense that they multiplied they multiplied in uh, Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 Matthew 5 9 blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called the children of God we who are children of God we are to understand that we should be for peace and anywhere you are whether in your little circle where you are whatever you do whatever your plan whatever action or attitude everything should be promoting peace and of course in your fellowship of course in your zone of course in your local church district church there must be peace because if there is no peace everything breaks down no matter what we have the skill the gauge the power the opportunity even the resources that we have if there is no peace everything becomes almost useless that's why the price is on the people that are making peace and it says blessed are the peacemakers be an agent of peace be a carrier of peace let your influence in your community in your local church where you are let it be somebody that is uh, let it be something that is bringing peace to the people number four it gives us uh, also prosperity in the work of our hand and number five it gives us prosperity in the land prosperity in the land we go back to the psalms in psalm 34 psalm 34 from verse 12 what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it it's telling us that uh, we should so love peace that we'll be seeking for peace we'll be pursuing it we we'll want that peace at all cost every cost and so you find out that in your family are you a husband in your little corner there seek for peace are you the wife in your little corner there you seek for peace are you one of the children in the family in your little corner there seek for peace and of course in the church as well you may not be able to immediately influence everybody in the church to maintain peace but in your little corner where you are make sure that you are seeking for peace and as you seek for peace and everybody is influenced and they are seeking for peace you'll find there will be peace there will be prosperity there will be protection and the blessing of the lord will be abundant upon everyone we go to number three patriotism of praying peaceful people uh, when we talk about uh, patriotism let's go back to the psalms to start with before i explain that word patriotism or patriot or what it means to be patriotic in um, psalm 122 psalm 122 verses 8 and 9 for my brethren and companions sake I will now say peace be within thee because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek 
thy good. I will seek thy good. You know what he's saying there? Remember, he's talking about Jerusalem. And by extension, he's talking about the nation of Israel. He's, he was saying, I'm an Israelite. And because I'm an Israelite, I'm going to seek the peace of Jerusalem. And I'm going to see the good of my nation, Israel. In short, I am going to be patriotic. I'm going to seek the good of my city and the good of my country. A patriot is one who serves and loves his fatherland. When you find somebody, because of his love, because of his appreciation, and because of his uh, desire to see progress in his fatherland, he serves, forgetting himself, as a patriot. To be patriotic then is to be motivated by genuine love in seeking the good and welfare of one's country. A true Christian will be patriotic. It means he will be law-abiding. He will be seeking the good of his community, of his city, and of his country. He will use all the influence he has to promote peace, protection, wherever he is. And he will promote justice and honesty among other people through his own life using his own good example. Such a patriotic person delights in doing only what is good. And he avoids all appearance of evil in his private and public life. All this we should do because of the house of the Lord. And because of the brethren, the children of God. Look at it again in Psalm 122, verses 8 and 9. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within 